Reality TV stars are constantly going through something. And in the case of Paul Tutul Sr., he has gone through quite a lot. Once the king of reality TV motorcycles, he surprised the entertainment industry when he launched the American Chopper. This happened for 10 years, making him a regular part of households. However, it got to a point where he had to stop producing the show, which made a lot of fans sad. But when you listen to his story as well as that of his son, it becomes sadder. Today we will examine the story behind Paul Tutul Jr. from American Orange County Chopper. But beware, it is pretty heartbreaking. The first time that American Chopper made an appearance on TV was in 2003. At the time, only a few people expected it to be a big success or start a new trend. But contrary to their beliefs, it ended up becoming an immediate success. It was a show about transforming each motorcycle into more than a vehicle. In the process, the show also influenced motorcycle fans worldwide, as viewers were hooked on the metal artistry. Even with all the success, the American Chopper was not as perfect as it seemed on TV. There was a lot of friction, especially between Paul Sr. and Paul Jr. This eventually got to the breaking point, and as much as the mixed family drama caught people's interest, it caused a great rift between the two. And eventually, in 2009, the fights led to Paul Jr. being sacked from Orange County Choppers. Shortly after, there was a legal dispute between the father-son duo over stock options, which greatly impacted on their relationship. But what happened to Paul Tutul Sr.? The firing of Paul Jr. in April 2009 was a pivotal moment in the American Chopper narrative. It greatly altered the course of the show. It wasn't long before Paul Sr.'s illicit use of drugs and alcoholism started being revealed. In 2011, there was a dentist named James M. D'Amico from Florida, who admitted to giving out human growth hormones and steroids without permission. And even though D'Amico eventually lost his dentist license, he still continued to prescribe steroids to people. And one of his clients was none other than Paul Sr. Paul admitted that he received more than 70 prescriptions from D'Amico and other health professionals between 2002 and 2006. And according to estimates, these prescriptions cost about $51,784.78. Furthermore, they were filled by a pharmacy in Orlando, which also pleaded guilty to distributing performance-enhancing drugs in 2013. The investigation into D'Amico and other doctors has been ongoing since 2007. But according to Paul Sr.'s confession, he has been receiving his medication from a clinic in Palm Beach, Florida, which was also closed in 2007 due to illegal substance distribution by its owners. However, Paul Sr.'s involvement in the case never reached the public until 2011. And since then, he has never commented. Even though Paul Sr. doesn't talk about his connection to illegal performance-enhancing drugs, he has been open about his struggles with alcohol and other drugs. In his 2009 book, The Ride of a Lifetime, he confessed to starting these habits when he was only 15. However, these habits went on for years to come. He wrote, Over the years, I have wrecked a dozen or more cars. On the weekends, I would wake up and not know where I was or how I'd gotten there. Still in the book, he went on to list some of his then-recurrent health issues, such as coughing blood, often falling sick, and breaking his arms in car accidents. And it was because of all these that he got addicted to the drugs. Another side effect of his alcohol problems is that there were issues in Paul Sr.'s family. However, he hadn't realized how bad it was until the mid-1980s, when he admitted to his wife Paula that he was giving up on fighting his addiction. Even though Paula convinced him to go to rehab, there was the fact that if he did, he might end up losing his successful steel business. So, instead of going to rehab, he kept his promise to his wife to attend an Alcoholics Anonymous meeting in January 1985. Since then, he has stayed committed to staying sober for himself, his family, and his business. However, this was not easy, mainly because he was surrounded by other addicts at work, including his workers and business partner, John Grosso. In a move to demonstrate his commitment to staying sober, he went on to ban alcohol at work. Because of this decision, those who shared his addiction, including Grosso, were not happy about it and just disappeared from his life. Eventually, Grosso admitted to Paul Sr. that his alcoholism had affected his liver, and he eventually died at 35. Paul Sr. doesn't regret his decision to stay sober, as it helped him take control of his life and build the business he wanted. Most of his issues with alcohol and drugs happened when TV cameras weren't around, unlike the constant problems within the Tutul family. 
However, things turned bad between Paul Sr.'s youngest son, Michael, and him. Even though Mikey was always around the shop, helping and bringing comic relief to American Chopper, their relationship soured when Mikey decided to become an independent contractor at Orange County Choppers. After this decision, Mikey always felt excluded from important events, and decision eventually leading led to a heated argument with his father. Eventually, Mikey left the company to join his brother Paul Jr.'s design business. At the end of the day, Mikey and Paul Sr. managed to fix their relationship. However, it was pretty sad to see them go through tough times. There were always conflicts between Paul Sr. and his oldest son, Paul Jr., in the American Chopper. One of the factors behind such a great conflict was Paul Jr.'s disregard for work schedules and rules. This caused so many problems and their relationship eventually hit rock bottom in 2008. During this scene, insults were uttered, chairs were thrown, and Paul Jr.'s termination from the shop followed. Even though there were efforts to mend things between them, Paul Jr. still left Orange County Choppers for good and started his own business, Paul Jr.'s Designs. With the growth of his television popularity, Tutul Sr. leveraged the Orange County Choppers brand to venture into the restaurant business. And so, in May 2010, a Business Wire announcement talked about a big plan to create a place that had a restaurant, bar, brewery, games, hotel, store, and entertainment. This was to be situated in Newburgh, near where Paul Sr. lives and parks his cars. When this plan eventually started, some investors were disappointed. It was originally named Orange County Choppers Roadhouse, but before getting here, it encountered lots of problems from the start. According to a 2016 report from the Miami Herald, more than a dozen businessmen claimed that they had invested between 12 hours and $15 million in the venture. Before they could decide on a name, the business underwent several name changes and involved issuing shares in paper companies with no real value. Even with that, this raised a lot of concerns among some observers. But that's not all. We all know that weddings are a time when families come together and celebrate. However, this was not the case for Paul Tuttle Jr.'s wedding. When Paul Jr. got married to Rachel Beer in August 2010, it did not lead to a reconciliation between father and son. Even though he was invited, the groom's father didn't even show up at his son's fancy wedding on New Jersey's Bonnet Island estate. The wedding was quite fancy, featuring a big six-tier cake and $28,000 worth of flowers. But even with the invitation, Paul Sr. held onto his hard feelings and didn't attend the wedding. However, that's not all that Paul Sr. was going through at the time. Information about his money problems made headlines when he filed for Chapter 13 bankruptcy in February 2018. What was even more shocking was that he had a lot of debt. According to the court papers on page 6, Paul Sr. claimed he owed about $1 million to about 50 people or businesses. In addition, he also had debts such as $1.8 million for his home, $151,000 in taxes, and $70,000 on credit cards. In addition to all the debts and struggles, he also had a few legal problems. He had ongoing lawsuits and claims against him. Paul Sr. has had to face a number of lawsuits for a while. His first appearance in court was with his son in 2009 over a business disagreement. In December 2016, there were accusations that his restaurant project was part of a Ponzi scheme. And in 2018, he had to face another lawsuit, this time for fraud. According to page six, Paul Sr. was accused of making his business partner, Thomas Derbyshi, lose a lot of money by pulling out of a TV project deal. Derbyshi claimed that he put $3 million into a spin-off TV show, Orange County Choppers. But Paul Sr. caused problems. He delayed filming the show for personal reasons, took sponsorships without talking to Derbyshi, and used some of the money to pay his son, Michael. However, Paul's spokesperson claimed that Derbyshi's accounts of what happened were not valid. Paul Sr. has been through a lot, and eventually, all this led to a lot of lawsuits, the loss of his house, and the closure of his business. However, he has since opened a museum where he showcases some of his best work on bikes. But what do you think of the struggles that Paul Sr. went through? Feel free to let us know in the comments below. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.